Hi guys, today I will be solving a question on latitude by meridian altitude, also known as meridian passage or MERPAS. And we'll be using the sun as the celestial body. So let's get started with the question. Uh, the question says it's 1st of September 1992 and your dead reckoning position or your DR position is uh, your latitude is the equator itself. So it's 0 degrees and 0 minutes. So we can just replace this with 0 degrees and 0 minutes and your longitude is 0, 050, 0, 27 minutes east. The sextant meridian altitude of the sun's upper limb, UL stands for upper limb, was 82 degrees 10.4 minutes. Index error or IE was 2.4 minutes on the arc and height of I was 17 minutes, 17 meters, sorry and you have to determine the latitude and the position line or PL. All right, it's a straightforward, simple question. The first thing that we'll be doing is we'll be finding out the time of the meridian passage or LMT meridian passage, local mean time of the meridian passage for 1st of September, 1992. So we'll go into the nautical almanac for 1st of September, 1992. What we'll be doing is I'll be taking off all this. So let's go into 1st of September 1992. Uh, let's find uh, somewhere here. Is there you go? So there you are. You have 1st of September 1992, and your meridian passage time is given here. So in the bottom right corner, yeah, this is your sun. This is your meridian passage time. 1st of September is here. The time is 12. So it's 12. This is the time. Okay, so your uh, time is 12. That is your local mean time or LMT median passage for 1st of September. So I'll go back here and what we have is 1200 hours here. All right, then we'll apply our longitude in time or LIT and our longitude in time is calculated by dividing the longitude by 15. So divide your longitude which is 0, 050 0 degrees. 27 minutes divided by 15 and what you will get is 0, 03 21 48 in your calculators all right so that's your lit your longitude in time if it's east so longitude east longitude east gmt will be least so gmt will be less than the lmt so when you see longitude east just subtract from the LMT to get your GMT. So longitude east GMT is least. That means GMT is less than LMT. LMT will be more. All right. So you will subtract it. So when you subtract it, you get the GMT meridian passage as 0838 12 seconds on the 1st of September. So this is your GMT and this is the time you have to use. And this is where you have to be very careful guys. Don't use your local mean time of meridian passage. You have to use the GMT time of the meridian passage. So I'm just taking off all these things so that you guys don't think it's too cluttered. So always remember in the exam, use the GMT time, not the LMT. All right, be careful because I've seen many students use the LMT time uh, in a rush. So use the GMT time. Now using this GMT time, all you have to do is just find out the declination and the declination value and of course we'll find out the d value as well so let's see how we do that so we go back into the nautical almanac for first of september gmt time eight hours so our declination that we'll find out will be for eight hours then we'll apply a correction for 38 minutes and 12 seconds so that we can get the gmt for eight hours 38 minutes and 12 seconds all right so let's go back into the nautical almanac for first of september eight hours so for 1st of September, 8 hours, you can see 1st of September is where? This is 1st of September, all right? And for 8 hours, your sun column is here. Hmm? So this is 6, 7, 8. So you have to find your declination. This is your declination. 8 degrees here and 8.8 .8 minutes here and north here. 8 degrees, 8.8 .8 minutes north, all right? Uh, while you are on this page, a couple of things you should be noting down is the D value at the bottom of the page. So you write down the D value as 0 0.9 and also see what is happening to the declination as you go from 8 hours to 9 hours. So when you go from 8 hours to 9 hours, and I'll erase this if you want me to, as you go from 8 hours to 9 hours, you can see the declination is decreasing. Declination is decreasing. So we'll apply a D correction 
and because declination is decreasing from 8 hours to 9 hours uh, we will be subtracting the correction so let's take all these values and go back into the calculation so we can see that uh, we have written the declination as uh, 8 degrees 8.8 minutes not the d value is written as 0 0.9 but that's not the correction value so what we'll be doing is we'll be using the d value of 0 0.9 and going into the increments page for 38 minutes and 12 seconds for 38 minutes and 12 seconds right because we have to apply a correction to the last minute and second so 38 minutes we'll go into the increments page for d value of 0 0.9 let's find out the correction so what i'll do is i'll go into the increments page for 38 minutes and this is 33 35 37 38 minutes there you go 38 minutes is here and uh, this is 38 and for a d value of 0 0.9 my correction is 0 0.6 so this column here is the v or d correction so v or d value 0 0.9 and this is the correction column so there are two columns here so for a d value of 0 0.9 you find out the d correction value of 0 0.6 all right so we go back, we apply the correction of 0 0.6 here and we'll subtract it because remember when we saw that the declination value from 8 hours to 9 hours was decreasing. So we have to decrease the correction, we have to subtract the correction. If it was increasing, we would have added the correction. And in that result, we get a declination of 8 degrees, 8.2 minutes north for 8 hours, 38 minutes, 12 seconds on the 1st of September. Then we write down our sextant altitude. Our sextant altitude is... 82 degrees 10.4 minutes given to us in the question then we write down our index error our index error was on the arc 2.4 minutes on the arc is always subtracted off the arc is always added so our on the arc correction will be subtracted once we subtract 2.4 which is given to us in the question as the index error we get an observed altitude as 82 degrees in 8 minutes all right to this we apply our height of i correction so dip is our height of i correction your height of i was 17 meters so I will take this 17 meters and go into the height of I tables to find out my dip correction. All right. So height of I correction is always subtracted, guys. Remember that. So what I'll do is I'll come out of this increments page and I'll go into the height of I page. Now this is normally the first page on your nautical almanac, but here I have attached it like an electronic document. So it may be a bit up and down here. So there you go. So height of I is 17 meters. So let me show you where the height of I. This is the dip column. All right. This is the dip column on your on the right side is a dip column this is the height of i the first column is in meters and we have 17 meters somewhere here so 17 meters will be lying between 16.9 and 17.4 no interpolation required you straight away pick up the correction value of minus 7.3 that is the height of i correction all right so you can pause the video here if you want to and have a look at the reason I just uh, quickly show you all this because I have made these kind of videos before as well. I'm sure you watched it. If not, then you can just pause it. But if I make it very slow, it gets very boring. So just pause where you want to pause. So you can look, look at the screen as much as you want to. Remember the first column of the height of I is in meters. This, col this column here is in feet. So depending on whether the height of i is given to you in meters or feet, just go down. No interpolation required. Just find out the range in which your height of i is located and then get the value and straight away apply it. So in this case, it's 17 meters lies between 16.9 and 17.4. The correction is minus 7.3. So I'll go back. I'll apply the correction of minus 7.3. As you can see, I have applied the dip correction or the height of i correction for 17 meters. The correction is minus 7.3. What we get is the apparent altitude. APP altitude stands for apparent altitude. Height of I correction is always subtracted, so I'll subtract the correction. We have 82 degrees 0 0.7 minutes is the apparent altitude. Now I need to apply my total correction. My total correction, I need to remember two things. The first thing is that it is the sun's upper limb as given to us in the question. Remember that in the question is given to us is sun's upper limb or UL and the date which is 1st of September. These are the two things that I have to remember. And of course the apparent altitude value of 82 degrees 0 0.7 minutes. So we go back into the page, the same page where we got our height of I from. So this here is the sun's total correction column. September comes between April to September here is the sun's upper limb. And our apparent altitude value was 82 degrees 7 minutes. So 82 degrees and 7 minutes lies somewhere here between 79.42 and 86.31. And our upper limb value is here, minus 16. All right. So again, pause the video here. Have a look. What am I doing? What are the column headings? Why did I go down one column? Have a look carefully. I went down the first column, which is the apparent altitude value, apparent altitude column. And the months is for April to September. 
the other month is for october to march but because our site was taken on september so we'll go down the column of april to september and we we'll go down the upper limb column to get the upper limb correction all right so minus 16 is what we have used here so upper limb corrections are subtracted lower limb corrections are added so i will subtract the upper limb correction and i get the true altitude value of 81 degrees 44.7 minutes all right once you get the true altitude firstly sorry oops sorry here you go yeah. all right once you get the true altitude value you subtract it from 90 degrees but before you do that you have to name the true altitude so you have to name it same as bearing all right so how do we name that it's very simple i'll keep it very easy for you guys i'll just erase all this so that you guys can uh, don't get confused here so what you do is basically it's a meridian altitude when the sun or the celestial body is exactly on the observer's meridian so you draw a straight line which denotes the celestial meridian then put a q here which denotes the celestial equator or the equinoctial so we call it the equinoctial all right then put your latitude with respect to the equator so your latitude given to you in the question is zero degrees and zero minutes so you are same place as the equinoctial so you are here z this is the observer zenith that is you on the celestial sphere i'll draw you here you are also on the equator and then plot the declination of the sun the declination of the sun is 8 degrees 8.2 minutes so if the north so if the declination of the sun is north it must be north of the celestial equator right so you put the sun here as x so the sun is 8 degrees and 8.2 minutes north from the equator so that also means that the sun is bearing north from you this is north from you right so that's why you will name the true altitude north as i have done same as bearing that's what it means then you subtract it from 90 degrees you subtract the true altitude from 90 degrees of course you will take the smaller number and subtract it from 90 and what you get is the mzd or meridional zenith distance mzd as 8 degrees 15.3 minutes so 90 degrees minus 81 degrees 44.7 will give you 8 degrees and 15.3 minutes and then you name it south why because mzd is always named opposite to the true altitude you name the true altitude north so you have named the mzd as south all right opposite to the true altitude then write down your declination as you have found out before 8 degrees 8.2 minutes all right and that is north and compare mzd and declination so if they are different names which in this case is south and north they are different names they are not south and south or north and north if they are different names you will subtract one from the other so you will subtract the smaller from the bigger and you retain the name of the larger so that means that whatever is the larger of the two you will retain its name so in this case the larger value is of the mzd which is south so you name it south you name the latitude south if declination was larger you would have named it north so subtract the two because there are different names one is south the other is north you will subtract the two and your latitude that you get or the observed latitude that you get is zero degrees 7.1 minutes south the latitude given to you in the question is your dr latitude which is your approximate latitude that is exactly at the equator so you are not at the equator you are about 7.1 minutes to the south of the equator this is a more accurate position provided of course you have obtained the meridian altitude accurately because this is based on the observation of celestial bodies the position line in meridian passage questions is always east west it's always 090 to 270 the reason being that when again i'll show it to you in the same diagram here so you can see that the sun is bearing north of us all right in this case it's bearing north of us this is the bearing and the position line is always drawn 90 degrees perpendicular to the bearing line so in this case it becomes 270 or 090 that's why all right that's why in median passage question without thinking put the position line as east west or 090 to 270 all right guys so this was another question on meridian passage or calculating the latitude using the median passage method uh, using sun as a celestial body i'll keep putting up more videos uh, about uh, this topic as well as other topics as well and let me know what you think about these videos thanks guys keep studying Bye.